Only a month after my appointment to the new position, the Empire of Japan has already violated one of our most sacral, sacred doctrines. They have started spreading their influence in South America. This is something we cannot stand for and definitely something we will have to counter. We have designed ourselves a new destroyer and looking at our finances, we might be able to start constructing two of them. So let's get uh, two of the uh, two of the Porter class underway and uh, that should not be too bad in terms in terms of our uh, we still got 21 million income so I think we can build a couple more actually uh, let's make it three more uh, that gets us up to five and I think we are pretty good yet yeah. okay so we've got some naval funding and we can also we can probably get another submarine built as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, but that that'll be okay. So uh, we're we're very much we're very much still in a fight with Congress about getting getting better ships going, getting more ships going. We have a very a very large battle fleet and not an awful lot of uh, not not an awful lot in terms of um, in terms of support or escorts so while we have a fair amount of battleships of various vintage uh, there's not an awful lot in terms of escorting that we have now we can't really afford for this financial year at least to build new battleships and we're not yet going to start any kind of refits but uh, for now the fleet is in port and we may have to start influencing uh, start dealing with the Caribbean situation and influencing the fact that the Japanese Empire has uh, has <laughs> has formed an alliance with Colombia. Uh, our fleet, in comparison, is relatively small, and we have definitely shipbuilding to do compared to uh, compared to others. Like uh, the Soviet Union has forty has five battleships and a fair amount of cruisers and destroyers. Uh, Japan is uh, has a fair amount of ships, but mostly they are smaller vessels. Uh, when it comes to the actual battle fleet, I think we have the advantage over pretty much everybody. Yes, including including the French of, and the British. So I think uh, the battle fleet itself is a power to reckon with. And uh, given that our finances are in dire straits, we are not going to react just yet, but we'll keep a very close eye on the Colombian situation. Well, the other thing that we might need is cruisers, because while these destroyers are nice, having something that is capable of uh, of helping uh, that is capable of helping control our trade routes, and it isn't a battleship, and is a bit more powerful than a destroyer, might not be a terrible thing. So let's see if we can get ourselves a cruiser design that isn't outrageously expensive, and uh, see what we can do here. Uh, we have the so requirements would be something that is fast uh, which probably is going to out rule out the most of the armored cruisers here uh, that light cruiser is and i think scout cruisers are pretty much all we can do uh, the armored cruisers are just too too slow because i'm i'm not seeing these as i'm not seeing these as being part of the battle line that's for the battle cruisers and battleships and destroyers can do the escorting there, but I see them more as operating independently. So let's see what a large scout cruiser would look like if we were to build such a design. And uh, we are going to call that, well, um, we might as well call it the Oakland. I can live with that. Uh, cities are, city is a good is a good uh, is a good setup so let's see let's see what we can build here i'm thinking of something slightly modern so uh, uh six inch guns definitely and uh and, and a fair amount of them but i think yeah we've got six we've got we only got twins unfortunately we don't have the the triple so we would have to go with an eight gun six inch setup let's see what that's going to look like if we are going to uh, stick a tower on that. Um, is this even fitting? That isn't. Oh, I could. I have no idea, by the way, what this is. Uh, crew quarters? <laughs> B 
fuel tanks? <laughs> I have no clue what that's supposed to be. But uh, can we? We can't fit. We can't fit any of the towers into into their designated slots. We can only fit them behind. So we may as well do that then. That looks really weird. I would love for that not to be there. <laughs> um, that's the large scout cruiser. Can we make a smaller scout cruiser then? And do, do I get do I get more? What's the design? What's the? I mean, I don't really want a massive light cruiser because they don't have any armor. Uh, what would that look like? I think I like that hole better because we've got the same. Yeah, we've got the same speed, and we don't have these weird. Uh, we don't have these weird things in front. So can we build a a scout cruiser that can operate independently at long range? And does not look like it has two sets of very strange uh, metal devices in front of it. Okay, um, we're gonna need we're gonna need six-inch twin-barrel guns, and that means we're gonna need a barbette. So that's probably too small. That's too small. Uh, that's too small. Dual barbette. Dual barbette. No. Um, Average size bet. Yes, that's gonna fit. Okay. So there we go. Forward guns. Um, is it worth it though? That's the question. If we go with a 10,000 ton displacement and we're not gonna get an awful lot of armor onto these things, um, can we get that round to 10,000 tons? Thank you. For an eight gun, eight gun light cruiser, hmm, not too sure. How, how how survivable these things are going to be <laughs> if they are facing enemy battleships uh, but that's also not their role their role is more is more trade route control and uh, and interdiction and i think for that and for something that can deal with with destroyers quite quite uh, quite well that might not be a bad thing let's see what let's see what we can do with those guns uh, can we fit okay we'll we'll, we'll we'll get to the other to the other guns in a minute uh, we do have a rear sort of mast setup there we go and funnels all right so i do want these things to be fast so 35.5 knots which means that they are uh, they are going to be operating as uh, many bulkheads standard crew quarters uh, oil fuel and gear turbine engines and we'll see what we can do with that one a dual big funnel uh, ooh, oh, that's terrible. Okay, uh, the funnels are definitely a problem. Uh, we're going to have to stick two of those in there. And then we're going to have to go up probably to four spoilers. And even that's not good. Okay, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, we might have to drop the speed requirement down somewhat. Yeah, there we go. 34 knots. That's more like it. But that's going to make for an expensive ship. So I'm not sure I'm liking this. Uh, because let's go back to let's go back to the large scout cruiser and see what the funnels are looking like here. So if we were going to oil fuel, natural boilers, gear turbine engines, and uh, funnel with watchtower. Uh, extra exhaust. These ones get 21 funnel capacity, these ones get 20 capacity, and they're smaller. So we could get away with something like that, but we're already at 70 million, because these things are expensive. Um, yeah. No. No. How, how large can we make these? Uh, 12,000 tons. I'm not sure I'm a, I'm a huge fan of these. The alternative would be a much slower ship, but uh, something that is actually capable of helping us control control the uh, control the outlying the outlying regions that can, doesn't have to be too afraid of taking something on mm. what are the armored cruisers looking like okay that looks completely bonkers and i do not want to have anything to do with it uh, that doesn't look significantly better yeah these are very very dated designs and I mean, if we were going for a small battle cruiser, then uh, they're getting way too expensive. Hmm. 
Okay, I think I think the original idea of unfortunately these funnels are not great and and they are taking a lot of space, but I think that's what we're going to have to work with here. Four spoilers, a gear turbines, just to get anything done. And then uh, stick the stick the front tower back onto it, and a secondary tower. It doesn't leave an awful lot of room for guns, unfortunately. But we may be able to get some side-mounted torpedo launchers going. Let's see. Um, very unstable ship that is. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be terrible in terms of uh, can we increase the beam a bit to reduce that? Not going to help an awful lot. Um, let, let, let's see what it looks like when it's when it's uh, when it's complete. So standard bulkheads. I think we set 34 knots, and we are going to go with the six-inch guns, six-inch six inch twin barrels. I don't even have space for those. Um, we might need a smaller forward superstructure because I think that's too large. Uh, enhanced front tower 2, enhanced front tower 1. Let's try this one. Uh, alternative... I, I, I was kind of hoping that I could fit... I was kind of hoping that I could fit... I could fit... I could fit one gun here, so I'm saving myself the cost for a barbette. Uh, so if we if we were fitting one here and one up top there, we can move the towers back a little bit. We can move the funnels back a little bit. There we go. And we can move the forward superstructure back a little bit, and then maybe we can still fit the barbette in there. Uh, superfying barbette average. There we go and get me the, that gun on there okay so we have an eight gun eight gun light cruiser with a ten thousand ton replacement and it has become the monterey what was it before was it auckland let's go with that um still not still not super crazy with it but it looks decent enough for now Let's see what else we can stick on this. We've still got a little bit of displacement going here. Uh, secondaries. We can put two inch secondaries onto this. We've got side mounts, but I do want torpedo launchers on these things. Uh, the quad launchers are prohibitively expensive, as we've seen in the last in the last episode. So triple launchers, I think, uh, is going to be the better design here. Um, be nice to have two triples. But weight and cost is going to be a factor again. Are these aligned? Uh, it's difficult to tell because it's opposing. Uh, I think they're aligned. Okay. Um, casemates, two inch casemates. Can we fit? Yes, we can fit some of two inch casemates onto the superstructure. These weigh six tons, whereas, it, whereas we're getting the uh, two inch twins, they're half the weight. So two inch twins it is. I never bother with the casemates, they're, they are heavy. Um, we could even stick them on top of the on top of the six inch turrets. That looks a bit wonky. Um, I'm kind of more feeling like uh, putting them. We can put a couple here, and we can put a second set here. And can we put an aft set somewhere? Um, not quite. There ish no not really okay um that is not terrible it's got some rapid firing the the the, the displacement looks decent uh they are a little high in the water for my taste um can we reduce that a bit uh, that is that is going to that is that should make trouble with with something uh, it's actually reducing the weight by reducing the draft uh, but it should increase the wave resistance so we should actually have problems with um, we can we can reduce the draft somewhat uh, let's make that eight percent down no, no. 
minus 8% actually. The other direction, please. There we go. Um, reduce draft a little, because these things are super high in the water. Makes them also a bit more stable. And then what else can we fit in there? Uh, auxiliary engines, these ones were causing ship flaws, so I'm just going to stay away from them. Um, that's okay. I uh, did say I wanted 10,000 tons of displacement, please. Can I have that? I can. And we obviously need better armor. Uh, better barbettes, a double bottom hull, uh, reinforced bulkhead. What's the practical impact of a triple bottom hull? Um, minus 20% minus 5 torpedo damage mm. maximum protection against torpedoes these should be relatively relatively flexible ships so um, let's put some anti-flood in there some decent citadel protection uh, we're already at 88 million I'm just comparing that what's the what's the Lexington costing uh, 400 okay yeah we're still how about the uh, the slightly weird Omaha design? 150. Yeah, I think we're still good here. And honestly, I've, I think this design is better than the Omaha's so far. Um, we want... Uh, let's see what we can do with these six chains. So I, I want these to be all rounders. So they do need to be able to stand up against enemy cruisers. So we do need to have some penetration here. At 5,000 meters, uh, 7,500 meters, 2.7 inch, that's not going to be enough. So... Uh, first of all, we want a standard ratio, and uh, let's see what cap is looking like. Come on, show me the, show me the guns. There we go. Uh, that's that six inch penetration at seven and a half thousand. That's not terrible. It's reducing the damage, obviously, but um, I think cap ballistic is cap ballistic one is not bad. And uh, we could get a little bit more, but we are we, we're continuously reducing the amount of damage that we're actually doing because we're putting more into penetrating than actually shooting things. Uh, let's see what armor we can stick on this thing, actually. Like, what's the maximum belt armor that we can put on that? Just hypothetically, 4.6 inch. So I would say that a... Uh, but that's at 130%. So I would say that... Oh, come on, game. Show me the... There we go. I would say that 8.7 inch is going to struggle to get through a 4.6 inch main belt. But then again, which light cruiser is going to have a 4.6 inch main belt? So at least she'd be able to shoot uh, to, to damage uh, ships of the same... Sort of ships of the same class. She will probably struggle a bit against heavy cruisers and larger targets. But that's where the uh, high capacity HE shells are coming in. Because while these things have no penetration whatsoever... Although, um, we could put these into... Can we get enough pen on the HE to do something about destroyers? Uh, no, standard ratio. No, standard ratio. Uh, base fused HE. 1.3 inch at 5,000 meters. Um, that might not be enough to... That well, should be enough to get through a, through a destroyer. And uh, the rate of fire is not great. Um, what's the modifier? This is just fuse. So this is uh, range, range decrease, range decrease. Uh, it doesn't give us any benefits on, on, uh, on fire chance though. So I'm kind of tempted to go at least nose fuse. That's 0.6. That still might penetrate a destroyer, but I think at 5,000 meter that's questionable. But if a destroyer comes any closer than that. Um, the AP is definitely capable of dealing with destroyers, but the HE is what, what does the damage, really. Uh, I, I, love the, I love the additional fire chance, but um, because that's really what we're after when we're firing at big targets. So maybe that's what we'll stick with, standard ratio. And we still have to do the... Um, uh, not picric acid, TNT. So what's that looking like now? Okay, uh, now we have... Okay, yes, that I had forgotten. Actually, now we have a significantly higher uh, penetration at 5,000 meters with 8.5 inches. So that should work. 20-inch um, torpedoes, please. And uh, we do have the auto loaders. That is giving us a 20% reduction in loading time. But this is a very, very new tech. 
and uh, going to be quite expensive. Plus, obviously, is going to is going to make everything a little bit more difficult. We could get about half of that without the danger of ship flaws. So maybe we'll go with that, and then we'll have uh, uh, electrical turrets because she is going to be rotating quite a bit and we've got enhanced reloading uh, standard shells i'm fine with that uh, range finder uh, coincidence and we do need do we need yeah uh, having hydrophones helps with spotting torpedoes so that's really imp important uh, we're going with uh, these are scout cruisers so rdf is probably not a terrible mine a terrible uh, thing i'm not really keen on well we might as well stick some depth charges in there but let's see what we can do armor wise so i think uh 4.6 inch is so uh, let's go 4.5 inch main belt did i put the best armor yes i did uh, we do have citadel armor so let's try to just max that out for now uh, just such that if we are getting penetrated at least we have a slim chance of defeating that on on the on the inside uh, let's get that going. There we go. Uh, we've still got some displacement to play with, really. So uh, we still have to put the armor. So um, what's our what's our deck pen? We'll it at a 0.9 inch, 0.9 inch, 0.9 inch standard. So if we had a one inch, if we had a one inch deck, we would actually be be reasonably safe against these guns. Obviously, uh, the problem is that if you had larger guns, they would be able to do almost two inch deck pen, and that's only a hundred, uh, what's that, seven inch. Uh, seven inch is 180 mils. So uh, if we're find it fighting anything larger, probably having a, having a, Having a one inch deck is is getting close. Well, let's see what we can do here. Uh, let's make the forward, um, let's make the belts. We've got the, we've got the, the displacement to work with. Uh, aft belt, a forward belt, three inch. That's uh, uh, one inch main deck, one inch aft deck, one inch forward deck. I mean, when, when I don't have the illusion that I'm going to be defeating defeating battleships here with this thing, but that's also not the purpose. Uh, these are not meant to be fighting battleships, so we don't need to overdo it. Uh, we can maybe go up to 1.5. Uh, 130 million. How are we comparing to the uh, to the experimental Omaha light cruiser? Uh, 150. We're still under, and I th I think I like this one better. So. Uh, we don't want mines. Uh, we do want. Uh, we can give it a one-inch superstructure, and I think we have a reasonable armor layout. We do have a bit of a weight offset that we can still deal with. Uh, Citadel armor is. I thought I maxed that out. Oh, does it? Oh, does it depend on on the amount of deck armor that I'm actually putting on there? Uh, yes, that makes sense. This is probably a percentage of something. Uh, the six-inch turrets can have an eight. Uh, can have an eight-inch. Uh, actually, that's over overkill, probably. Um, they can probably get away with a 6-inch side armor, a 3-inch top armor, and the barbette gets whatever we can stick into it. The 2-inch guns don't get anything. These are 6-inch six six inch 42s, 4 rounds per minute. Um, slightly slower reload than I would like, but I think 4 rounds per minute is, is, is workable. These things are much more rapid-firing. So having having a couple of these little buggers over there, I'd really love to have another set of the of the two inch guns. Um, can we fit that anywhere? Yes, we can actually fit that back here. How did I not manage that last time? There we go. And that also reduces our forward weight offset. Uh, we've got a bunch. That, oh, oh, they get in the way of the of the turret, of course. Yeah, that's probably not such a good idea then. Can we? Get them somewhere where they're not getting in the way of the turret. Uh, I would say turret. Nah, that, that really gets in the way of that turret. Okay, let's not do that. Uh, what we can do is we can simply stick stick one on the on the top of the turret. There we go. We have a uh, so two inch AA gun on top of that turret. And I think the casemates were just silly, weren't they? 
uh, yeah, they're just, they're just there. Uh, how about the three inch casemates? Same thing. And three inch secondaries, three inch twin barrel. And we could upgrade these two inches to three inches, honestly. Uh, what is what would that look like? So that gives them a little bit more punch. Can we fit these here? Yes, we can actually. Can we fit one there? Yes, we can. So we've got the three inches here. Three inch twins. And we'll leave the two inch AA gun on top of the turret there. Uh, we do still have a forward weight offset, but we can balance that over. We can balance that through the... Ah, this gets in the way of the torpedo tubes. Okay, hang on. Uh, oh yeah, that's not good. I would love my torpedo tubes to actually have triple deck launchers. Um, why is... Oh yeah, that, that gun gets in the way. Okay, I think I think the three inches was a nice idea. But uh, it get it does get in the way of the torpedo tubes, unfortunately. So can we do that sort of thing? One here, one there with the two inches. And then get the triple launchers here. Uh, sort of... Where does it... Okay, that, that really gets in the way of things. Why? Okay, hang on. Let's get rid of these first. Put my triple on... Okay, my torpedo... Something's wrong with my torpedo tubes. Um, is that a problem with the super with the funnels in general? I thought for, I thought earlier on we had an actual... We actually had decent uh, a decent torpedo tube angle. But it looks like we have lost it. So what if we do it like this? Um, not a fan of that, but we've, we've got a slight protrusion where the torpedo launch is overhanging. But at least now we have workable torpedo arcs. And can we now put the three inch twin secondaries back in? Yes, we can actually. So let's see, we'll put one here, put one there, and we can still fit one back here. That does not affect the torpedo launchers. We've got the AA gun on top of the turret. Uh, we've got the torpedo angles and we've got a decent set of uh, rapid firing secondaries. And that doesn't affect these gun turrets either. Nice. Now we do have a forward weight offset. Uh, we can... Uh, we can... Do I need to... Oh yeah, these guys... Do they, they, they can't even be armored anyway. They're just, they're just splinter shields. Uh, we can deal with that using using the armor. So... Uh, we can get the aft deck uh, 1.5 inch. That helps. Um, we can get the aft belt a little bit higher. 3.5. Um, can we just move anything backwards? I think we're we're pretty much set in terms of layout here. Uh, forward right, but we can just we can just increase the the aft belt a little bit more until it's even. Aft deck. Yeah, can't do that one. Okay, four inch aft belt, three inch forward belt, 1.5 inch main deck, one four, 1.5 aft, uh, and we've got plenty of displacement to spare, to be honest. So, if that's the case, can we just make the ship smaller? Can we can we go down to 9,000 tons to place displacement without messing up the design? Uh, we can. Uh, can we go down to 8,000 tons displacement? I think we can't, but uh, that's all. Oh, that is already the minimum displacement. Okay, nice. We've got a very small. Uh, we've got a very small. We've still got a thousand tons displacement. We could stick more armor onto the thing, really. Um, 4.6 main belt is the best I can get. Uh, we can. I mean, we can give the aft belt 4.5 and give the forward belt a bit more until the offset's gone. There we go. Okay, we've still got almost a thousand tons displacement. We don't really have space to put anything, unless we want to put another gun turret into this thing, but I don't think we have the space for it. How, how, much, how much forward can... How much aft can I put this thing? Hang on. Game. Please let me move the... Okay. Um, in that case, we'll just leave it as is. <laughs> All right, so we have a relatively small scout cruiser, and that's going to be that is a relatively cheap design. It's better than the than the wonky uh, Omaha that we had, and uh, it has it has some capacity of uh, at least dealing with destroyers and other light cruisers, uh, transport interdiction, and uh, generally uh, generally helping with 
Can we make this faster? Maybe we can just make her faster. Uh, no. That really... It's not so much a displacement problem, it's more the... It's more that uh, she gets really unstable at that point. Uh, have we forgotten anything? I think we've got everything. We don't want to stick mines onto it. So we're, we're, we're very well protected from, from fires and floods. Uh, the gun, the the guns are good. Uh, the obviously the uh, the armor is somewhat lackluster because it's a light cruiser. But I think for her, for her general design, she is still pretty well armored. And um, I mean, the one thing we could do is stick more deck armor onto it. But then again, I'm I'm not planning to fight battleships in this thing. If I see a battleship, I run away because with 35 knots, she should be faster than any battleship out there. So, or 34 knots. So I think the Oakland class light cru scout cruiser is a good design that we're going to be using uh, to for for controlling our far-reached uh, colonies and everything. So let's get uh, let's get a couple of Oaklands underway and uh, review our <laughs> review our finances because that's always the problem. Okay, what's it looking like? Um, actually, we can't afford any Oaklands. We're already, we're already burning through our funds here, and we have to be careful that we're not going into the negative, into the red too much. But uh, yeah, we've got a new design, and we will event. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got a bunch of the Porter class, uh, Porter class uh, destroyers in, in con under construction. And uh, I will have to fix the names for these. Uh, give me a second. Let's see if we can find historical Porter class names. Okay, so we've got Porter. We're going to be having uh, Selfridge. We're going to have the McDougal. I will try to, at least if I'm using a historically a historical class leader name, I will try to at least uh, somewhat adhere to the uh, uh, where, where available, somewhat adhere to things because otherwise it gets really weird. Uh, so we've got we've done that with the other ones already. Uh, obviously the uh, obviously the Oakland class of light cruisers is completely completely different and an ahistorical design for the period. The Americans haven't actually built I think light cruisers until the. Brooklyn's, which would have been an interwar, post post treaty design sort of thing, but we're 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 in the nineteen twenties. The naval treaties haven't really happened, so uh, different stories altogether. But yeah, for now we'll have to somehow manage manage our finances and get get that under control. And uh, yeah, fleet maintenance hundred forty million. <laughs> that is very expensive, but uh, that's what we get for inheriting. Inheriting a fleet of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine battleships, and uh, did we end up not building the Lexington? I think I ended up not building the Lexington. Did I? Oh, I might have run out of money. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might actually. So that, that's just the design we have in the we have in the drawer. I thought I actually built the Lexington. Oh well. Uh, must have run out of funds back when we did the initial setup. Um, yeah, I can't can't build it right now, but um, maybe we'll do a a because the one thing about the Lexington was that they actually had. Um, uh, if we have a look at the design here, uh, the Lexington, which is very expensive, so that's effectively a Pennsylvania class. Uh, these things had uh, what did I stick in there? Um, to Two, two triples and two, uh, two twin 14 inches. Uh, so uh, that would be a, uh, the Pennsylvanias would have had uh, 12 14 inch. So that would actually be better. And that thing is cheaper than the Lexington. So Lexington would have been a very expensive, not very good ship. Uh, but maybe we'll do a refit if we get the. If we get the. Maybe we'll build one. Uh, at some point, but um, maybe we'll also just re refit the design and modernize the design a bit and then we'll see what, what's happening with it. Because there are obviously no aircraft carriers here. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody and I will see you next time. Bye bye.